Okay. All right. We are live. This is Indie Talk with Jesse and Jaron featuring the AWF champion, the revolutionary Bill Williams. How's it going, Bill? I'm doing well. How are you doing, Jesse and Jaron? Good. Pretty good. Yeah. Thanks good for having me on, on, dudes. You're yeah. welcome. My, my second podcast or my second interview in two nights. So, <laughs> oh, okay. Oh, wow. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> He's doing, doing, the, doing the podcast, uh, you know, do, making the rounds this week on the podcast. So it, it's cool. It's fun. I'm glad to be on. Yeah, yeah. Awesome stuff. Yeah. All right. But yeah, basically, just have a, a good beginning, better beginner question. Uh, if people don't know, just uh, going through the beginnings again, uh, talk about how you got into watching wrestling as well as your early career. Man, watching wrestling, that's I'm I'm 35 years years old, so we got to go back about 3 decades to get to the start, you know, mm-hmm. Saturday mornings, WWF, um mm-hmm. WCW in there in my my early years too, just watching watching guys like Bret Hart and The Legion of Doom and The Undertaker and Berserker and Doink the Clown and Kamala and you know all those characters they had growing up um, when when I when I was a kid. Um, watched a lot of wrestling in my youth. I used I remember I always used to uh, go to the video store with my cousin, and we'd rent like the same you know 1993 Survivor Series or 1988 Royal Rumble over and over again. And so we'd even see some of the wrestlers that were a little bit before our time and, and, and got into some of the more classic wrestlers of the eighties that way, that way too. But yeah, I was just a fan. My, my whole life kind of dipped in and out of it when I got into like my teenage years and my early twenties. But yeah, once I graduated college with my, my social studies bachelor degree, um, one of the first things I, I started doing in addition to pursuing a, a, a teaching job was, trying to find a place where I could get trained to be a professional wrestler. Mm -hmm. And it was tough sledding at first because there wasn't a place here in Minnesota to really do that, at least not a place that I was aware of. So, Mm -hmm. you know, I I asked around, I I had people tell me Chicago, I had people tell me Philadelphia, but I just wasn't at a point in my life where I could make those moves and, and do the other things that I was trying to do too, professionally, personally. But mm-hmm. luckily, uh, in 2017, I'm, I'm actually repping right now. The Academy School of Professional <laughs> Wrestling opened up in Brooklyn Park, Minnesota. Mm-hmm. And so at the ripe age of 30, I started training. I'm, I'm actually coming up on my anniversary here. June 30th, 2017 was oh. my first class. I'm coming up on my five-year anniversary here of when I began training. And um, I've been, you know, it's it's been pretty crazy what's, what's happened in in my professional wrestling career over the last five years, a career that, you know, I wasn't sure would ever really happen or come to fruition. So that's kind of my story in a nutshell of how I went from, from fan to, to professional Mm -hmm. wrestler and AWF champion. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 It's always uh, really cool to hear about wrestlers beginnings and how they were able to train and, like yeah like you said uh we've the academy it's uh helped so many wrestlers become uh or so many people become wrestlers we've had so many academy guys on here they're representing so many companies in the the midwest now so it's uh definitely really cool to be uh an academy member so right. were you huge wrestling fans growing up too uh, yep. yeah i got Jeff, around probably more my generation huh <laughs> yeah I, I was into the uh AWA, uh, old WWF and WCW, so and world class here and there. So, cool. Yeah, 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 yeah. The old school. I've watched some old school here and there. I mean, like before two thousands, but yeah, it's definitely always cool to get a taste of everything. So yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, Jesse. So out of. Uh, Everybody that's been at the academy and with the recent graduations, uh, who do you think is going to be a breakout star from the academy? 
Breakout star from the academy. Man, I mean, the, the reason that question's tough for me to answer just as I think about all, I mean, there's just, A, so many people with the potential to be a, to be a breakout star, to, to make it, so to speak, to be on our televisions every week. Obviously, we've seen the, the Martin brothers, Dante and Darius, they're, they're already there. Um, mm. Poor Darius has had a little bit of an issue with the injury bug, but I have no doubt that once he's once he's healthy, he's going to make a, a big time impact in AEW there. Mm. But yeah, mm. as far as uh, who hasn't really made that kind of a an impact yet, that has the potential to do it. I mean, I'm, I'm looking back. I'm looking at my photograph up here of uh, Class Charlie. We I, that's the class I was in, the third class at the Academy School of Professional Wrestling. I'm in that photo right there in the center is JDX. Man, it's, it's, it's hard to find, hard for me to imagine a person who's got more uh, more tools and, and, and a higher ceiling than that guy. I think he was just on mm -hmm. AEW Dark this week, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah. so that definitely seems like a guy that can be a breakout star. But man, we had a good class. And I, Coda Jacobs up there, you know, he's wrestling all over the all over the country here, at least like the eastern half of it. Sebastian yep. Taylor. I'm on. I'm on a couple of shows with with him in in the next the next few weeks. Here we got Damon Spriggle, who just uh, started his own kind of little promotion on YouTube, um, oh. doing doing his his Spriggle Dojo thing, and he just had a, a nice little garage brawl with with Jordan. Um, we got uh, Free Range Kara up there. I know she was just on Wrestlepalooza over the weekend, so she's. Mm -hmm. She's, I mean, is, is there a, a female wrestler in the state of Minnesota who's who's bigger than Free Range Care? I don't think there is. And so mm -hmm. she's she's obviously already been pretty successful. So, yeah, a lot of a uh, lot of potential out there. And obviously there's a bunch of people I didn't name, too, who could just as easily end up being household names in the years and decades ahead. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. On uh, Facebook here, we got Mr. Sean Knapp. He says, "Oh no, <laughs> don't take that question." Oh, no. <laughs> that's not a question. Sean saying. Knapp, he's like he's he won a um, indie wrestling camera guy of the year one year, if I'm not mistaken. Oh, huh. he's, yeah. he, he films for Michael's Corner. Does a heck of a job. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's right. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Yeah, good job for Sean. And yeah, he says, "Hey, Bill." So, yeah, he hasn't <laughs> started know. anything yet. So, <laughs> uh, just, just hey, just just a greeting. Yeah, just a greeting. Yeah, no question, well, Sean. Thanks for thanks for tuning in, buddy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. We, if, Sean, if you want some questions answered, I know you probably know a lot about Bill. But if you want any questions, we'll see if uh, Mr. Bill Williams will answer, and as well as any other fan questions that are out there. So. Sean has been promising me that he's going to give me a hug um, at, at every <laughs> wrestling show that, that he attends. And then half the time he doesn't come to the shows. And, and then the times that he does, I, I don't ever seem to get out of there with a hug. So tell, tell Sean Knapp if, if, if he wants me to answer questions on this podcast, and he better quit ghosting me at my wrestling shows. <laughs> come, on, come on, Sean. You can't yeah. ghost the champion. Yeah. Here, Sean. yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, yeah. So, uh, uh, you recently worked with uh, Winnipeg Championship Wrestling. Uh, talk about working with them uh, back in April. I believe. God, I wish I could, but I didn't make it up there. Um, <laughs> oh, if you'll recall, I, 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 I was really looking forward to it. That was going to be my international debut. Obviously, my Canadian debut. I mm. was super pumped to pump to work for. Uh, winnipeg pro wrestling but that was the weekend it was april we know how how winter can be in minnesota and even wow. more so to the north and in canada where it doesn't it doesn't always go away when we want it to and that weekend there was a major snowstorm north of us that hit mm -hmm. north dakota and manitoba and would have mm -hmm. made the seven hour drive um pretty dangerous and treacherous so the the two yeah. minnesota cars that were scheduled to go up there did not go and we had to cancel the booking and i was super disappointed because i was really looking forward to that booking but i'm definitely 
um, still holding out hope that I can get get back on a card there and um, the months ahead and and make the international debut that I plan to make a few months ago. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, hopefully you're able to do that sometime. Uh, yeah, I was supposed to team with Kyle Pro too. I was kind of <laughs> looking forward to that. You know, usually, usually when I'm in the ring with Kyle Pro, I'm looking at, across the ring at him because he's my opponent. So it would have been interesting to see how the two of us, us two Americans would have done against the, uh, the Canucks they were going to throw against us up there in Winnipeg, but we'll, we'll have to have to put that one on hold obviously for a while. Yeah. Yeah. My camera don't. All right. Yeah. 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 Definitely. Uh, would be pretty cool to see that eventually. So yeah. You're going to make the trip. Uh, Well, I mean, uh, online if i see any pictures. Oh, yeah, you'll, you'll log in yeah 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 it, it would be pretty cool to go to canada for wrestling i yeah i've been getting so inspired just to see different companies in the midwest and i forget that there's other states out there and i've been to wisconsin and north dakota for wrestling so canada is definitely something i should do and you know who's from winnipeg mm-hmm. there's a lot of guys from winnipeg chris jericho maybe oh yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah that's true uh, yeah, I yeah. It. It wrestle in the same town that Jericho was born. So well, that's what I'm talking about. Mm-hmm. Yeah. All right, Jesse. So, would you ever wrestle Chris Jericho if uh, the opportunity came along for you? Oh my God! In a second. <laughs> I mean, I'd rather be on his team. You know, I, I think Bill Williams, Chris Jericho, we could we could really wreak some havoc. Uh, maybe more him than me, but I could be a good cheerleader. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I, if that opportunity ever somehow, some way presented itself, yeah. and obviously you got to take that opportunity, right? I don't feel like that's yeah. on the near horizon or anything like that. But like I said, I, I cr- kind of crazy already that my career, a lot of things in my career that I, I wasn't even sure that I was going to have a wrestling career ever. So yeah. Uh, the fact that I made it this far and I've got to do some pretty cool things over the last five years, you know, mm-hmm. anything's possible, I guess. Yeah, 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 definitely. Uh, oh, we got uh, Mr. Russian Beast, the real Drago. He I said, know. So. Oh, my comrade. <laughs> comrade. <laughs> yeah. yeah. You got any stories about Drago or no? Or um, here? When uh, I I got a Drago story um, when we were at the Academy School of Professional Wrestling, Kevin Nash, Big Sexy came in and he put on a did a little seminar for us. And um, there's there's another story where I was asking him some questions about, um, you know, being a big guy and stuff and how you carry yourself in the ring and, and as a, as a big guy. And he looked at me and he said. You're, you're a big guy how tall are you i said six three he says sean michaels was six two you're not a big guy and then everyone got a good laugh out of that but one person that kevin nash was rather impressed with i do recall is the real drago he he, took, he said hey i look at you i look at those those 24 inch pythons you got hanging off your shoulders there and and i i take notice and so mm-hmm. that was uh that that that's pretty cool when you got the kind of physique where you impress big sexy mm-hmm. yeah 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 it's definitely uh def- yeah definitely got to be a big thing to impress uh mr kevin nash so yeah yeah yeah, yeah great yeah uh oh he's drago says he remembers that and then uh laughing oh yeah i would think so <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> Yeah, yeah. First day, he says first day at the academy. So, yeah, yeah, yeah it's definitely something to remember. So, yeah. Um, uh, so a few years ago, I think this is when I started hearing about you a little bit. You were tagging with the, the Renaissance Ricky Norin. Guy. Renaissance Revolution. Do you have yeah. any uh, stories about him and working with him? Oh, he's just such a freaking crazy nut, isn't he? I mean, yeah, have you seen him a- lately? I, I was so stoked because I saw him on the, you know, he, he's been he's been working over the last couple of years, but him and I haven't been on a lot of shows together because he's out there doing all these crazy death matches. 
not mm-hmm. really my thing, but hey, more power to him. And he and he's got he's accumulated himself quite the following doing that. And now he's now he's running a church or a seminary or something like that. I see. I was super pumped to see him on a higher ground card recently, where uh, he made his return to the Twin Cities, made his return to higher ground. You know, he's the first ever title holder in higher ground, which was then Showtime. He was the first ever Future Clash champion. So I was super stoked for my guy Ricky um, to make that return, and I and I believe he's he's got a title match, a heavyweight title match against uh, for the higher ground championship against Heavy Metal Lore at the next mm-hmm. show. I think that one's in like um, St. Paul Park, kind of out there east of St. Paul at uh, Shane Black's bar. I believe Shane Black is the owner of of the bar where where that match will take place. So fact check me on that. Go to the higher ground page. I'm not exactly sure but i know ricky's got a title match coming up and i'll be rooting for him mm-hmm. yeah 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 i don't know shane black has a bar but yeah i definitely oh yeah i've uh, seen seen shane black stuff with uh battleground and time bomb and stuff so he's a young yeah. entrepreneur mm-hmm. and man does he look good mm-hmm. good looking yeah. young man yeah yeah definitely uh yeah so speaking of those uh death matches i I didn't get to see the match, but I saw the the build up to it. It was a uh, uh, it was a time bomb show. Uh, I think it was closer to March. I think it was in April or March or April or something. He he uh, died aside, and uh, Ricky Norton went at it, uh, preparing for their battle for the show and time bomb for uh, I think a number maybe a month after that. They uh, die you know Norton. He came out with a cross and like started cutting up die aside. I'm like. Yeah, he's like he's like a vampire hunter or something. <laughs> mm, yeah, and I haven't seen too much <laughs> deathmatch stuff. I maybe seen one in person before, but that was definitely something. And showed my Christian friends, and they weren't happy about it. But <laughs> no, I would think they'd be big fans of Ricky Norton. He's on but, their side. No, yeah. Well, I don't yeah. know about the cross stabbing part, but he, well, you he's know, definitely holy. But <laughs> if, if people won't accept Jesus willingly, then sometimes you gotta, you know, stab them into their chest. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I guess that's one way to do it. So, yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. it's that uh, or eternal damnation. So you know, take your pick. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, all right, Jesse. <clears throat> So what do you think of the program? Oh, the program. They're the worst, aren't they? <laughs> Just a bunch of annoying, smelly, Fiji drinking knuckleheads <laughs> is what the program. I, 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 at my, I, know, I know you were there, Jaron, at the last show when I defeated Nick the Natural Nelson. Um, mm-hmm. Obviously, I've I've had good luck against Kyle Pro. He is the reason I am the AWF champion. When I defeated him a few months back in Elk mm-hmm. River, uh, Stonehenge, I haven't I haven't got one on one. I was supposed to have him in a one on one match, but that mm-hmm. show was canceled, I believe, and we never rescheduled. But man, I'd love to get him in the ring one on one because mm-hmm. man, is he a thorn in my side when he is out there accompanying his. Uh, his his fellow program members um when mm-hmm. when they're facing me in, in competition and and jj rogue i mean he's not he's not a he's not a a, a wrestler per se but god i'd love to get my hands on him too he, is, uh, he has mm-hmm. also been quite the thorn in my side at awf shows on social media man oh. i would i would i would love for uh awf commissioner and owner tony denucci to to let me get my hands on on JJ Rogue and give him a taste of what professional wrestling is really all about. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He definitely does uh, cause a lot of controversies, and he's always he's always getting in the ring when he's necessarily not supposed to. He's not a wrestler, and he's coming out with the with the briefcase, and he uh, did some stuff at the last show as well. So the very you know, annoying. Uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, it's definitely a way to describe them. So, yeah. and not handsome. Not, it, not none it. of the program. None of the program is handsome. Mm. Yeah, I mean, it's 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 like they they formed a. They said, "Hey, let's get all the ugliest guys in the AWF together, and let's form a faction. We'll call it the program. We'll have a barcode as our symbol, 
and we'll drink really expensive water and and and, and <laughs> we'll see if it gets over and surprise um the awf fans don't really seem to be all that that pleased with it so you know maybe <laughs> maybe maybe give something else a try their mm-hmm. uh, their program mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah 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 they definitely uh been doing their thing with fiji water gushers and everything and they're just i get yeah they they're uh yeah, they're the they're the program, I guess. So uh, they, they just had to go there at the gushers, Jim. <laughs> the gushers. <laughs> mm. Just had to go there. <laughs> yeah, Kyle Pro and his gushers. So, yeah. Uh, but yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, talk about your. I know you talked about it a little bit, but talk about a little bit more of your journey to becoming a school teacher. Yeah, I mean, that one is a little more. Traditional, I guess. I went to college. Mm-hmm. I got trained to be a social studies teacher. I mm-hmm. love history. I love politics and government and philosophy and geography and psychology and sociology and economics. So I got some training, got some education, and mm-hmm. now I'm doing my best to pass those insights and that knowledge along to the youth the generations of of the future mm-hmm. yeah, yeah yeah i thought it was really cool when i found out that you were a teacher i'm like man so teaching uh teaching history i mean that's a good subject to learn about as well and yeah. pretty much important especially now so if you want to understand anything in the world worth understanding you need to know the history that made that thing the way it is today. And mm-hmm. so wh- whatever it is, everything has a history and, and learning that history can help you to, you know, not only understand your world, but navigate your world. If there's problems you wanna solve in your world, knowing mm-hmm. the history of those problems and where those problems come from is pretty essential. And mm-hmm. so that's what uh, we social studies teachers try to do in our classroom is to give Mm -hmm. kids an understanding of where their world came from whether that's their country or just you know the entire globe and and Mm -hmm. give them some tools to to understand that world and maybe go gandhi on the bit and someday be the change they they wish to see in that world Mm -hmm. yeah 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 definitely and you were you were named the education hero by the the minnesota twins so i thought that was (laughs) pretty cool of you. Uh, yeah that was pretty cool they sent me a pretty sick jersey that i just got in the mail the other day um they gave me some tickets i'm gonna i got to pick a game i'm gonna go catch the brewers here in early july so hopefully twins are still atop the division at that time and can take it to our uh you know neighbors to the east there over in the national league mm-hmm. yeah twins I'm, I'm very grateful for that opportunity got got nominated by my my colleague, Mr. Wigan, who is quite the presence in the social studies world, not just at our school, but in our, in our state. And uh, oh. I, I got selected. So that was pretty awesome. Mm-hmm. Yeah, definitely. Definitely sounds awesome. So, yeah. All right, Jesse. So what do your uh, students think of you being a wrestler? Well, you know, my students, so they'll, they'll ask me questions like, hey, uh, don't you have like a, a wrestling match this weekend? And I say, me? <laughs> <laughs> Why would I have a wrestling match this weekend? I'm, I'm, I'm just a social studies teacher. I've got, I've got papers to grade. I've got lessons to plan. Mm. <laughs> and... And, and, and I think you got me confused with someone else. Oh, oh, okay. If you, if you look at my, if you look at my name badge, I might say, doesn't, does my name badge say Mr. Bill Williams? No, it does not. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So you, you, you must, you must be, I must have a doppelganger who, uh, who, who is kicking butt around the, Minnesota independent wrestling scene in the Midwest because uh yeah Miss mm-hmm. Mr. Bagaman he's, he's just at home grading papers oh 
Two different guys, yeah. Oh, yeah, two different dudes. Mm-hmm. Very different. <laughs> oh, okay. That's like... Uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's like we... I, have... I'm, a, I'm a Zeke freak. I don't know about you guys. <laughs> I like yeah, Zeke, you know. Zeke is pretty... Yeah, it is pretty interesting right now. And having his older brother Elias come back, that's really cool, so... Yeah, I mean, I can't even believe that that's his older brother. They, they look like twins. Mm-hmm. It's pretty yeah, it's... Mm-hmm. But, uh, yeah, very cool that, um, you know, after Elias was gone for a while, Ezekiel got his foot in the door, and, and that was really cool to get to see them both on Monday Night Raw together mm-hmm. earlier this week. was really mm-hmm. happy for Ezekiel and Elias, for both of them. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, definitely uh... – uh, two really cool dudes and great wrestlers. So. Yeah, very cool in their own way. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Uh, oh, uh, in the comments section here, uh, we were just talking about him, but Mr. Uh, JJ Rogue, he says, Oh, uh, <laughs> he's watching, is he? He's watching right now. Huh. Yeah. He says, Get out of your fantasy world, Bill. Get with the program. Oh, yeah. Get with the program. <laughs> Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's 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 going real well. <laughs> program, mm-hmm. I, I I was I, I was with the program last last Friday in Egan. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and, I, and I, I don't think the program enjoyed being with oh. it very much. If mm-hmm. if I do recall how how the night turned out for them, so uh, yeah, between between me and uh, big humble day Damon Spriggle, um, not a great night mm-hmm. for the program. Uh, in Egan, Minnesota, last Friday. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know if the program wants more of uh, Bill Williams. No, I don't. There. I don't think they do. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Because I was there, watched it. You, you attacked JJ Rogue and uh, and then uh, defeated Nick Nelson, and oh. yeah, it's pretty interesting. So yeah, Nick Nelson, he's a horse's ass, isn't he? <laughs> Jesus. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah way to describe them yeah Yeah. i'll give that one to bill (laughs) (laughs) Mm -hmm. oh he uh rogue says spriggle saved you and you know it oh yeah well Mm -hmm. yeah i mean i mean to to be fair um it would it had turned into a three-on-one handicap match well 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 while the referee was down Mm -hmm. and and so yeah i guess in that sense spriggle did save me from an illegal interference on the part of JJ Rogue and, and Stonehenge um, who, who ran out of the rings like cowards once Damon Spriggle came to, to my rescue. But uh, yeah, once it was just one-on-one Nick Nelson and Bill Williams in the ring, I did to Nick Nelson exactly what I was doing to Nick Nelson before the program interfered, which mm-hmm. is kicked his ass, put him up in the ghost of Robespierre, hit it, Got a three count, and I'm still the AWF championship as, as a result. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Looking forward to defending that title this week, too, against a not program member. Mm-hmm. That being a big Jackson P. Larkin up there at that free show mm-hmm. we're holding in, in Cambridge mm-hmm. this Saturday. Um, yeah, yeah. He's a, he's a formidable opponent, so I'm, I'm really – Looking forward to uh, testing my title reign mm-hmm. against someone of his ilk. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was looking at that, and I had that in my notes. Uh, uh, AWF Blue Jacket Havoc Saturday, June twenty fifth at the Kappa Tattoo, Cambridge, Minnesota, and you're facing Jackson Larkin defending the AWF title. So you guys should be there if you can. So yeah. for the fans out there. So yeah. And uh, yeah, speaking of stuff you've done before, uh, or well, all right, no, that was like a good transition, but yeah, you've uh, you've uh, made some uh, WWE appearances uh, over the years as well with uh, being a, a guard to Baron Corbin and then uh, uh, Roman Reigns. Uh, what was that uh, being like out there for ringside? You know, usually when you talk about some of your your greatest moments as a wrestler. It's not getting your ass kicked all over an arena, but in, yeah. but in my particular circumstance, um, getting, um, 
getting just tossed around first the uh, the Bradley Center in Milwaukee and later the Target Center in Minneapolis by Roman Reigns while um, inadequately attempting to perform security for for Baron Corbin is definitely one of my most memorable career moments and and a major highlight for me for sure. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, definitely. And at good. least I didn't get it as bad as downtown PD Brown did. I was just gonna say <laughs> that. My <laughs> God. <laughs> he didn't awesome. <laughs> I mean, if if he ever sees Roman Reigns again, finds himself in the same room as Roman Reigns, he better just run the other direction as fast <laughs> as he can because he was lucky to make it out of TLC alive that night after <laughs> after what Roman did to him, and and so that was man, poor Petey. I'm I'm, mm-hmm. I'm glad he's I'm glad he's still able to continue his wrestling career after that ill-fated weekend. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I watched the clips back, and yeah, it was definitely a big clothesline, big beating, and but he says he still wants a match with Roman, so uh, we'll have to see about how that works. So, mm-hmm. yeah. Uh, uh, Jesse, do you prefer or do you uh, prefer indoors or outdoors for wrestling? Gosh, that's a really good question. You know, some of the uh, some of the my favorite shows that I've ever been a part of have been outdoor shows, mm-hmm. and usually mm-hmm. those outdoor shows are super fun because they're taking place when when the weather's good enough to have an outdoor show in the summer and. There's some kind of like a festival going on or you're at a brewery or, you know, it's usually just evidence that you're at some kind of a party, but Mm -hmm. um, indoor shows, man. um, When you got a hot crowd and you got the fans chants and jeers echoing off those walls and the ceiling back into the ring, that's Mm -hmm. pretty tough to beat. And so I wouldn't necessarily say one over the other. Both can be great um, and both have kind of their um, unique things that make them uh, different, but, but fun. Mm. Right. Yeah, definitely. That's a good question though. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, going into a little uh, name association, uh, Basically, I just have a, a little list of wrestlers and just want to get your uh, uh, thoughts on uh, when you first met them or heard about them or interacted with them. So, uh, oh, this is, this is going to be fun. Yeah. yeah. Uh, first name we got is uh, Ja C. Ja C. Superstar. Mm-hmm. Uh, Eric Cannon. Eric Cannon. Cranky. <laughs> no, he's cranky. <laughs> He is cranky, yeah. cranky old man. <laughs> yeah. yeah, but 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 I mean, he he is the face of Minnesota wrestling, is he not? Mm, I mean, that, that is the what the independent wrestling scene in Minnesota owes to that guy. I mean, that that guy is is on the Mount Rushmore of of Minnesota wrestlers, as far as I'm concerned, and and I mean all. Minnesota wrestlers. I mean, what what that guy's done for professional wrestling in this state is is pretty unrivaled over the last couple of decades. Mm-hmm. But cranky, but cranky. Yeah, yeah. Turn that I frown think. upside down, Eric Cannon. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, Chadwick Wentworth the third. Chadwick Wentworth the third. Bogey. Bogey. That is. Yeah. yeah. And he's not. A, he's not as good at golfing as he uh, pretends to be bogey oh mm-hmm. I, I bet a lot of double and triple bogeys double and triple bogeys. yeah there you go. But i bet he takes a lot of mulligans that he doesn't deserve oh you know, like yeah. you know he, he got he he, he should have got like an 11 or 12 on a hole but he'll score it as like an eight mm-hmm. Some bastard. <laughs> yeah yeah uh uh cal creed cal creed suplex he does have a good suplex yeah Yeah, i I had i wrestled cal creed like a few months ago and man oh Mm. you you know when you wrestled cal creed the night before when you get up the next morning Mm. because you've been suplexed a substantial amount of times and and your body lets you know it Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh, Danhausen. Danhausen. <laughs> odd. odd. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, he's, he's, he's a little oddball. He's a little odd. Yeah, but kind of cool. Fun. So, yeah. Uh, uh, clutch. Clutch. Yeah. Who's Clutch? I, I think you I think it was a battleground show that you faced them at, or I think, or maybe you were supposed to face them or something, but I, I saw a name Clutch that you, on a poster, but huh. Okay. We'll pass that. Yeah, pass that. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Josh Price. Josh Price. Thick. <laughs> yeah. Who it is just. I mean, he's called the wrecker for a reason. He mm. is just a freaking wrecking ball. He is mm. a big, meaty man. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he does. And, and I wish him the best too. I I know he's he's had he had a doctor visit mm. recently that didn't um, go super well, and he's got some dates coming up. So I wish him the best on those dates, and I wish him the best in his um, you know recuperation once once those dates have come to. A conclusion and he's kind of just focused on repairing what ails him mm-hmm. yeah 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 best wishes to josh price so yeah um yeah we're getting to the end here but just want to go over uh i know you, we talked about awf but uh i was kind of surprised you got another show the same day is is that still going on still going on man and and that's why i got a Man, I, I can't leave leave anything. I, I, I got to bring it all to the ring when I take on uh, mm-hmm. Jackson P. Larkin. My AWF title is going to be on the line. So, so I've got to give it all I got to try to retain that belt. But whether or not I retain that belt successfully, I've, I've got to get my ass in my 2013 Ford Fiesta and drive down to Maplewood for Pro Wrestling Battleground where I'm taking it on um, up-and-coming Connor Hopkins, the wild child. And so two very different opponents hoping to go two and oh, hoping to, to ride that, you know, if I can, if I can defeat Jackson P Larkin then hoping to, you know, use that adrenaline to just move right into my, I'm sure I'll be tired when I take the ring and battleground, but, uh, but maybe, maybe the, the high of retaining my AWS championship can propel me to a second straight victory in, in a night for two different promotions. So mm-hmm. yeah. Um, yeah, very much looking forward to this, to this Saturday and this Friday, Paradise City Wrestling down in uh, down in Newmarket under the big top five at the Double Wide Bar. For people who haven't been to the Double Wide Bar, this bar is what's up. This is like you know when people do party buses down there in uh, southwestern Minnesota. This is one of the bars they go to because it's just like a freaking party. And so mm-hmm. wrestling fan, no wrestling fan, if you're in the area down there, Prior Lake, Lakeville, New Market, New Prague, Lonsdale, Montgomery, get your ass to the double wide mm-hmm. on Friday. First bell's at eight o'clock and that's going to be a good time. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I'll definitely be uh, make sure I'm there for the Paradise City Wrestling under the big yeah. top five. And Coming? I've been- yeah, I've been to all five shows, so it's oh sweet. You know, I haven't been to any of them. Oh yeah, oh yeah, you, you're in for a good treat then. So especially yeah, wrestling. Paradise City Wrestling crowd, they're they're hot. I know that. So mm-hmm. yeah, 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 they definitely are. And uh, yeah, first my first ever wrestling show was back when they had the first one. Uh, our first ever uh, Midwest show was back in 2017. I went down to the under the big top didn't know about midwest wrestling or independent wrestling had that and uh mitch paradise and um uh forgot i uh, forgot the opponent now but yeah mitch paradise and all those guys down there definitely uh tore it up and uh five years later i'm looking to be at the under the big top five and we got you there too so it's even better so yeah it's gonna be yeah. a good time you coming jesse that one i won't be able to that I won't be able to make it to, but there's a couple of events down in my area. Um, I think Tony was saying you guys got St. Charles in August. Oh, okay. And you got one coming in Pine Island too. So oh, yeah. Right, probably for those two events, I I will be definitely there for. Awesome. Yep. 
yeah yeah all right but yeah it was uh awesome having you on the show and talk yeah. about uh wrestling and definitely excited for uh i'll read about the stuff or look about the stuff uh for awf and battleground but yeah definitely be there for paradise city wrestling uh your opponent's still undetermined so i'm excited to see uh who that's gonna be and uh the fans are probably excited as well so yeah we'll see i'm, I'm looking forward to it too mm-hmm. yeah yeah well, yeah awesome talking to you and uh yeah i hope you have a nice night yeah jaron jesse thanks for having me on it was fun awesome. and, uh hope you guys have a good night too mm-hmm. yeah well, adios amigos all right see you bill <laughs>